Judith Dada. I'm a GP at La Familia. We're an early stage venture fund investing across Europe and the US. We've just launched our third fund generation of 250 million. We have about 80 portfolio companies and really investing at the earliest stages. So think of us when it comes to B2B tech companies that are enabling or disrupting large industry. We tend to lead at the earliest stages, but we also have a growth fund where we co list at later stages of a company's growth curve. Well, I think it's 2023, so you can't really not pay any attention to everything that's happening in and around AI. I think right now everyone's trying to sift through what exactly that's going to mean and where exactly value is going to accrue. But it's, it's certainly, I think, right now, one of the biggest trends that we spend a lot of time discussing in the investment team and really trying to sift through you know, what that's going to look like in the next couple of years. But I think at the same time, we also see unprecedented challenges, for example, still in the climate space. Um, I, I think we have a massive blue collar uh, worker shortage that's going to hit the market over the next uh, decade. Um, and so I think there's a lot of just really hard problems that I think the venture market has tended to ignore over the last couple of years where money was really cheap and it was easy to go after things that, you know, scale 100x overnight. And I think um, there's probably some reorientation needed in the venture ecosystem um, to really kind of focus back on the stuff that's hard that, you know, is going to drive outsized return, but is probably going to, you know, require you to look a little bit closer and to really focus on either the, te the technology or the team that's able to really kind of build something that can sustain and fight, you know, whatever problem uh, we have in the world. Yeah, so I think along the lines of, of what I just mentioned, I think, you know, the venture ecosystem in Europe is very much maturing. Um, you know, I think uh, there's much more interconnectedness in between the different ecosystems. I think when I started in Venture six years ago, it was very much kind of, you know, Berlin doing its thing, Munich doing its thing, Paris doing its thing, Stockholm doing its thing, London doing its thing. And now I think the entire ecosystem, because of the unicorns that have been created, that have offices in all different sorts of places, we have a lot of venture funds that have opened up offices in different locations. There's a lot more interconnectedness. And so a lot of the kind of private information that is so key to the venture market is now you know, in more and more heads. And so a lot of the talent, a lot of the knowledge can spread. And I think that's a really great sign of maturity. And I think, again, you know, it really needs for that interconnectedness to be able to you know, provide the type of talent base, provide the types of synergies, you know, a really, really great computer science founder from, let's say, you know, a great um, school in Paris, meeting with someone, let's say, from the UK. Or we see a lot of researchers that have, you know, actually are European, but have spent time at Meta, have spent time at Google, have kind of been educated abroad that are coming back. And so it really needs for this kind of, I think, interconnectedness of the ecosystem, also like this foundation, the soil that is kind of growing from the bottom up, I think for the next decade to now actually bear the fruits of, I think, what we've all worked so hard to create and have seeded over the last couple of so I think overall something that is truer now than, than it ever was is that you just need patience. I think this is just it's not a it's not a market that is for the um, faint-hearted but also not a market that you know is 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 the right one for anyone that's looking for really really quick returns because um, you know, creating value and value that compounds over time just takes time and it takes patience. Um, I think that was one of the first things that I was taught when I came into this industry six years ago, and it's very much true. I think I still feel like I'm at the very beginning of this journey and it's likely going to take me another decade to really, you know, come to the full extent of wisdom, you know, of, of really understanding everything and every single nuance of the ecosystem. I think at the same time, something that actually a friend of mine, um, GP at another fund, told me that kind of the current moment of crisis is that a lot of um, fund managers are behaving like surgeons that can't see blood, right? I think we've all been just so used to an environment where everything was always pointing up and to the right. And now we're just facing what is just a really realistic, you know, kind of market cycle. And it's just, there's no up without a down. And, you know, I think let's all be good surgeons. Let's all kind of get used to seeing blood. I think we owe that to founders. We owe that to LPs to just keep, you know, a really calm and steady mind 
um, and just really push through if you if you believe in the underlying strategy, if you believe in the underlying talent of the European ecosystem, I think you're going to you know succeed. I think you're going to come out at the other end and you're going to be fine. But it does take the patience and it does take kind of the level headedness to really be able to push through and not get carried away in the you know frenzy either of a market you know kind of boom, but also not in the frenzy of of you know kind of the market downturn that we're currently seeing. So I would say um, particularly the blue collar workspace, that is a space that I've been spending a lot of time on. Um, if you look at the European ecosystem, we really have a worker shortage that is millions big. That goes for the, the care market, that goes for the energy trades. And I think it's so interesting because with AI, you know, a lot of the, I think, spaces that humans always thought they would um, capture or conquer forever, the very creative spaces, more the spaces that maybe we associate it with the white collar space, right? I think ChatGPT can now write poems, it can, you know, create um, other generative models can create images that are just as good as what, you know, photographers or what um, poets out there can create, at least a lot of poets. And so I think um, what we're now seeing is the stuff that's actually a lot harder to automate is the nurse, is the person that's installing a solar panel. And we actually don't have nearly enough people um, working in these jobs in Europe to be able to, you know, fight the changing demographic, to fight, you know, climate change and so on and so forth. So I think that's a really drastic, massive economic opportunity. And we need to figure out ways in the VC ecosystem, both to make the existing supply of talent that we have in the blue collar space more productive and really kind of be able to give them the lift that we've been giving people working on a computer because their jobs have transformed massively over the last couple of decades. But really a lot of blue collar workers haven't yet seen, you know, kind of that productivity boost, haven't also yet seen that economic boost. And so I think that's one, one aspect. And the other aspect is we just need to find ways of creating more supply in the market. We need to, you know, get skilled um, people into the continent um, and be able to kind of, you know, staff them in companies and be able to kind of get them uh, to be productive as part of kind of, you know, G European GDP growth. And so I think that's a couple of themes that I've been thinking about quite a lot from a VC perspective and think um, there's a lot of great opportunities for companies in that space.